Rook and Direwolf form an alliance to get revenge against Ursaw for the death of Swine. But when they send out a call for other wardens to join their cause, which ones are allies, which ones are enemies, and who will get to Rook first? Let's find out in our review of Rook Exodus number three from Image Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Rook Exodus number three from Image Comics and Ghost Machine, which is Jeff Johns' new publishing imprint. But before we get started, let's recap briefly what happened in issue number two. Rook was left without his friend Swine, who was killed by Ursaul, the warden in charge of bears, or at least the person who took over <laughs> Ursaul's helmet. Ursaul also used his machines and his gigantic bears to destroy Rook's escape ship. Direwolf helped Rook escape destruction at the very last minute, setting out our protagonist to seek out a course of revenge, but he's going to need some help first before he can do it. That brings us to Rook Exodus number three. Direwolf comes up with a plan to get help that she and Rook need to assemble an army of allied wardens against Ursaw's growing threat. If three helmets can connect together at the broadcasting grid, they can triangulate and establish a communication network with all the other wardens. There's just one catch. The grid is under the control of one of the oldest wardens and master of the gigantic turtles we saw in the previous issue, and his name is Carapace. If you've been following along, one of the gaps in the series so far has been the lack of information about the world of Exodus and the other wardens. Where, they, where are they? What are they doing? In Rook Exodus number three, Jeff Johns pulls back the curtain to give readers a clearer picture of the world, setting up an environment where the wardens are scattered but surviving. You get a very strong post-apocalyptic feel, very similar to something like Mad Max or Planet of the Apes. The world gets a lot bigger or at least more defined and fleshed out in this issue. Dire Wolf leads Rook to an abandoned riverboat that they intend to sail downriver and get to the grid, which is built on the remains of a former hydroelectric dam. Carapace agrees to meet with him when they get there, but a pair of gigantic turtles armed with massive guns do not give Rook the impression of a warm welcome. Carapace makes it clear he does not appreciate Rook's lack of commitment to fight for Exodus, but he agrees to attempt the triangulation to try and gather more wardens and form a potential army to stave off Ursaw's attacks. What I like about what Jeff Johns is doing here is he's insinuating that there are consequences to Rook's prior behavior. The first two issues were all about Rook trying to escape Exodus by building a rocket ship and leaving. That reputation is now following him and as a consequence of having that reputation, Carapace and the other wardens don't quite trust him. But that's a good thing. We want to see consequences from new characters. We want to see that they have to live with the decisions they made and how those decisions affect them going forward. Johns is smartly using those consequences to create interpersonal conflict, to force Rook to toughen up in the face of more adversity and potentially lead to more drama down the line. Meanwhile, we catch up with Ursaw aboard his large crawling fortress known as the Ark as he considers his next move. We see that Ursaw has a collection of warden helmets from his past kills, which he keeps mounted on a wall, and he bequeaths individual helmets for his warriors who have proven themselves in battle and considered worthy to be one of his lieutenants. When Carapace, Direwolf, and Rook jack into the grid to start the triangulation and form the warden network, they soon to protect the presence of a bunch of wardens so we get a, sort of this montage view of all the different wardens and all the different animals they can control. Ursaw also gets pulled into that network. The call to arms is a smart way for Jeff Johns to broaden out the character list in a very quick, neat, efficient way because it sends out a broadcast signal and you see all the people reacting to it. But at the same time, you have the enemy also listening in on that same channel. It increases the tension level significantly. How do you communicate with your allies when the enemy is listening in and knows where to find you? Not sure where it's going to lead, but it's obvious that that's going to present a big problem for the allies and the protagonists in the future, so they're going to have to hang on. But that sets up an interesting conflict for Rook to deal with. The issue concludes with, again, that montage that introduces a small ar army of wardens who may or may not answer the call. We see Ursaw has given swine's helmet to one of his warriors who has now renamed himself into warhog and we also see another warden that's on ursa's side somebody who's in charge of pythons her name is na and she's a slithery snake-like person overall the issue accomplishes a lot in terms of building the world and characters even if the circumstances that brought exodus and the wardens to the state are still completely blank both in the past and going forward in the future. Let's switch gears a little bit to talk about the art. If there's one thing that Ghost Machine gets absolutely right on every single issue they produce, it's tapping the best artists around to bring the worlds and their characters to life. Jason Fabach, who's the artist here, honestly, he can't do any wrong uh, because he gives you sweeping cinematic settings, immaculate and amazing character designs, and a lot of dramatic compositions in the panels that hit you really hard. This is some of the best art of any comic you're going to find on the shelves right now, at least on that score. Ghost 
this machine is pretty much top of the list. Let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture in series continuity. Where does Rook Exodus fit with all the other Ghost Machine titles? The answer is we don't know. Early marketing materials have suggested that they're all part of the same timeline. So Red Coat, Geiger, and all the titles are eventually going to coalesce into some big grand universe. But we don't see it here. So if you're looking for that interconnection between, say, Junkyard Joe and Geiger with Rook, it's not there yet. In fact, Rook takes place in a semi-distant future. It's not quite clear exactly how far ahead they are in the timeline, but they're far enough ahead that they're not playing in the same space. But there is a suggestion from the market materials that they're all going to overlap in some possibly some big crossover event. We don't know yet, but as it is right now, this title is pretty much standard. Final thoughts, what do you think about Rook Exodus number three? The issue greatly expands the world and characters from the planet of Exodus, escalating the stakes and the complexity of the world that looks like it's on the brink of war. Jeff Johns does a commendable job giving readers plenty of wow moments. You get lots of wow moments in this issue, mostly through the delivery of Jason Faybach's jaw-dropping art. I mean, it's just truly it's spectacular. Past and the future of Exodus is still pretty much a blank slate, so there are a lot of questions that have yet to be answered. and. Hopefully we'll get those answers sometime in the near future. But this issue gives you a lot to chew on, especially when you see the montage of all the different wardens and what they're up to, albeit briefly. Therefore, we're going to give Rook Exodus number three from Image Comics an 8.5 out of 10. It's a strong score because it's a strong comic. I'd like to see more of the world building to kind of fill in a lot of the blanks because there's still a lot of blanks. But so far, the art is fantastic and the premise is interesting. So we want to see where it goes going. What do you think? Is this your favorite Ghost Machine title so far? Or do you like one of the other titles? If you like what Jeff Johns is trying to do here, give us a thumbs up, show your approval and your satisfaction. And if you think maybe one of the other titles is stronger or maybe our score is too low, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Otherwise, thank you very much. And stay tuned for the outro for the next review.